So this video is going to be covering uh, categorical speech perception, and this is something that not a lot of people have really heard of um, outside of the realm of sensational perception, but I want to tackle it in this video by not only defining what it is, but also demonstrating the Yanni versus Laurel debate. I'm sure you're familiar with it. If you're not, we'll go over it in this video. And then I want to conclude by talking about some of the basic research in this area, along with what it means about uh, real world behavior and about language. Categorical speech perception is one of the harder things to explain in sensational perception, at least in my opinion, because usually people have a little bit of a hard time understanding what it is. But luckily, there is an internet meme out there that will help us understand exactly what it is and what it does. And you've probably heard this sound before. What you're looking at right here is what's called a formant, which is kind of like a visualization of a uh, collection of sound waves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this sound for you. And what I want you to do is to think about what is being said. Laurel. Laurel. Now the cool thing about this is that people usually hear one of two things. You either hear the phrase Yanny or you hear the phrase Laurel. You probably remember this, right? This blew up the internet for about a week or so and people could not get enough of talking about what it was. And so people fall into different camps. Are you team Yanny or are you team Laurel? And so this harkens back to the blue and black dress. You may remember this on the internet. That's already been settled. It's blue and black. I've made a video on it. If you think that it's white and gold, fight me. So what I'm going to do now in order to demonstrate categorical speech perception is I'm going to play that same sound for you again, but I'm going to manipulate it. I'm going to change some things about it, so I want you to listen very closely. Hey, listen! Here's what happens when you remove the high frequencies of that sound and add low frequencies to it. Laurel, 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 Laurel. Pretty cool, right? By now, everybody should be hashtag Team Laurel. All I did was tweak a little bit of the frequencies that you were hearing in that sound. So let's see if we can do this in reverse. Can we get you from hearing Laurel to hearing Yanny? Hey, listen. Let's see what happens whenever I add high frequencies and remove the low frequencies. Laurel, 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 Laurel. Yanny, Yanny, Yanny. And by this point, everybody should be hearing Yanny. So what's going on here? Let's take a look at the original sound wave. So here's the sound profile for Yanny. Here's the sound profile for Yanny. And here's the sound profile for Yanny. Now, if we look at the individual formants for each of these, we can see that they look quite different. And so what I love about this is that in all three of these cases, you're having the exact same vocalization. It's just being manipulated. You're hearing different frequencies of that phoneme or of that syllable. This is categorical speech perception. Or maybe we can put it another way. Let's just say that we perceive words categorically. Or if we want to simplify it even more, we can say that we can hear one thing or the other, but we can't hear both things at once. In other words, we pick a perception of that vocalization. We don't mix them. And while this all may seem very new because the Yanny versus Laurel debate is only as young as the summer of 2018, this is something that researchers have been interested in since 1957. So dating back to Lieberman and his colleagues, their experiment in 1957, basically what they studied was just this very question. What happens whenever we mix together sound frequencies of different vocalizations? What you're looking at here are three sound formants for the phoneme ba, da, and ga. Those three things, they sound kind of similar, right? So what happens if we were to find a middle point between these frequencies? What would we perceive if you were played that sound? And what Lieberman and his colleagues found was really quite interesting, that instead of hearing some middle step like bada or daga, people instead heard one of two things, either ba or da, or da or ga. I know that sounds like gibberish, but basically what people were hearing was one or the other. So why is this interesting? Let's compare it with vision. Here's a cute little monkey and here's a cute little cow. Now we can kind of imagine what a mixture of these things would look like. And through the power of some island of Dr. Moreau science, you can kind of see that here where we're moving from left to right, becoming more and more like a cow. 
So we can visualize these things. We can see this as both a monkey and a cow, but we can't do that with speech perception. We can't hear both Yanny and Laurel. We pick one or the other, not both. All right, so this is all, this is all cool, but what does it have to do with anything, right? It seems really kind of isolated. We're talking about just looking at a sound and manipulating it in an artificial way that doesn't happen in real life, right? But the reason why we have categorical speech perception is because of language. Try to imagine what language would be like if every single sound that we heard sounded like a mixture of similar sounding frequencies. We wouldn't be able to understand heads or tails of anything, much less what someone is saying, right? So you can think about it like this. Whenever we hear a, a word, let's say the word warrior, for example. We hear those two syllables, we put it together in one nice word, and we know what that word means, maybe it conjures up an idea or something like that, we know what it means in English. But imagine if whenever you hear the word warrior, if it sounded like a mixture of several different words all at once. You can imagine how difficult it would be to have a conversation with somebody, right? Because you're constantly thinking about what's being said and if it's this other thing that's in a completely different context, it doesn't make any sense. So in other words, categorical speech perception helps us understand language. It helps us communicate. It helps us uh, perceive fluent speech. So. This does come with some really kind of strange uh, consequences and side effects though. One of those is the Yanni versus Laurel debate, right? Where we, uh, we hear something and some people hear one thing, some people hear the other thing. But we also see it in the McGurk effect. If you're, not, if you're not familiar with the McGurk effect, I have a video uh, that you can watch, you can check out, where you can see it in action. But basically what we're looking at there is we're hearing one thing, we're seeing a different thing, and we're perceiving a third thing that's different from those other things completely. I know that sounds kind of abstract, um, but the way that works is because of categorical speech, speech perception, where we're perceiving speech to be one thing and not a mixture of two different things. All right, so I hope that helps. I hope that explains some things. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. Uh, otherwise, I will see you later. Bye.